That extraordinary fact comes from a book which looked at the role of women on farms in Ireland. Despite all the progress, farming here is still a male preserve. Even though women play an important part in the rural community and on farms, their presence is rarely seen and their voice not sufficiently heard. Women in Europe are hidden in the family farm. That means that their work isn't recognised, their work isn't counted, therefore they're not really paid for the work that they do, nor do they receive professional recognition for their skills in farming. And what does that mean? That means that women turn away from farming. Some are prepared to stick with farming and push for change from within. Gronje Dwyer is a farmer, but like many, she came to her profession the traditional route. I became a farmer when I married Jim and that was like most women in Ireland that's how I entered farming was on, on marriage. On the census form I am classified as a housewife. Now there's nothing wrong with being a housewife um, but I'm a housewife and I'm a farmer and I'm contributing to the GDP in this country but I am not uh, statistically recognised on that form. If you don't feel that you're being recognised in your job, well then why would you encourage your children, especially your daughters, into a profession where you're not recognised? Women have said to their daughters, you have a different life from mine because my life isn't very satisfactory. And those daughters as a result have got exceptionally high levels of educational attainment and never come back to farming. I think also increasingly women marrying into farming are distancing themselves from the farm, pop from the farm operation more and more. Anxious to find out more about how women were faring in other countries, Gronje applied for and was awarded a Nuffield farming scholarship to study the issue. Her travels brought her to Norway, France, Austria and New Zealand, where she discovered that when it comes to women on the land, Ireland is at least 10 years behind the rest. In New Zealand and Australia, if a husband and wife go into the dairy milking, they are recognised as joint partners. The milk check comes out addressed to both partners. The discussion group meetings, the uh, farm union meetings, uh, the same in Australia. They're both regarded as equal partners in the business of farming. One of the interesting things about in Norway is their inheritance law. And the inheritance law states that the eldest regardless of gender, inherits the farm. They felt that there were a lot of women leaving rural Norway and, and that there was, would be depletion of the rural communities. Here in Ireland, some of the recommendations of the recent department report on the role of women in agriculture are being implemented. There's funding for a network of women farmers and improvements in the carer's allowance. But to many, this is just tinkering with the system when more fundamental reform is needed. I think the minister should start first and foremost in his own department with regard to, for example, the herd number. The herd number should be automatically in both our names. Now, we're not looking for extra subsidies or anything like that, but it's just the recognition that Jim and Gráinne Dwyer farm the farm. For example, um, I can technically sign the calf registration forms. I'm doing the paperwork anyway, and it's just a matter of signing my name. That why do I have to wait for Jim to come in at the busiest time of the year to sign these forms?